with Lauren to talk about greater bilbies, what are their threats, and what Kurum and wildlife Sanctuary is doing to help save them. So what are some of Bilby's adaptations to help them survive in the wild? Yeah, so the first thing you're going to notice about a Bilby is they have giant ears. Um, so this gives them really good hearing so they can hear predators approaching uh, and enables them to escape. They're also excellent diggers. So they have yes. uh, really strong claws that enable them to dig burrows, uh, which their burrows can be up to two metres oh, underground. Wow. And any one Bilby can have up to 12 burrows. So that way when they're out eating, they can run to their closest burrow that they have and escape that predator yep. as well. So how long do you, uh, bilbies usually live for? Um, so you're looking at around about five years in the wild. Yeah. And then um, you can often almost double that. All right. So unfortunately bilbies are the last of their kind. Can you tell me a little bit about some of their extinct relatives like the lesser bilby? Yeah, so the bilby is part of the bandicoot family, uh, but the bilby is the only remaining bilby of, of those bandicoots. Um, the lesser bilby um, was discovered in the 1880s and in 1930s um, were the last recorded live lesser bilbies yeah. um, and unfortunately they had to deem them extinct um, later in the 50s and 60s when they hadn't seen them for so many years. Yeah it's absolutely awful and to think that there's only 600 of these guys left in the wild. Yeah um, those are devastating numbers and um, the exact same threats that made the lesser bilby extinct is the exact thing that's happening to the greater yep. bilby today so still continuing. Yeah so what sort of threats do greater bilbies have in the wild? There, um, there's a few threats um, so they do have competition with the grazing animals and rabbits for burrows and things like that. Yep. Um, large fires that sweep through their habitat yep. will take away ground cover that protects them from predators but the biggest problem is feral predators yes. so foxes and wild cats um, is just absolutely wiping it out is. their population. So what is Crumb and Wildlife Century doing to help save greater bilbies? Yeah, so uh, we are very lucky to be part of the bilby breeding program um, that zoos are taking part in. And with this program, um, some of the young uh, are then going back to the wild. So in Karawinya, Western Queensland, All there's right. a fenced off um, area for bilbies. So they, they're kind of wild, but kind of yeah, still in captivity. Yep, so bilbies that are being bred in zoos um, are being taken out there yep. um, so that they can be part of the wild population. Yeah. It's a really exciting project. It is. And I guess uh, when they're in that semi-wild environment and there's lots of different bilbies, that uh, makes a bigger gene pool, which is always better. Yeah, so um, there's a few zoos that will be breeding and then all adding to that. So the genetics will um, be good yes. for different parentage. It will. Mm -hmm. So how many babies will a bilby usually have? So usually a bilby will have one or two joys at a time um, and it will only take her about three months to raise a baby and then she's ready to go again. So, <laughs> uh, they pretty much breed like rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? So this is Janda. So he's named after a town out in Western Queensland around the areas that bilbies are found. <laughs> and we've had him here a couple of years. The little ones that we were just in with, those are his little bubbers. So he's been quite successful. He's had five young since he's been here. So what can everyday people uh, do to help save bilbies? Yeah, so there's probably two things that I would recommend. Um, the first one, is an easy one and it's uh be a good cat owner yes. so yeah we don't want to add to the feral cat population yeah. it's already out of control um so if we can keep our cats indoors have them microchipped so we can get them back if they get yes. lost and secondly is to help out uh save the bilby foundation yes. so this is a really good charity that's doing really good work for the bilbies out in the wild and you can do it in two ways you can donate money which is really important because all the work they do out in the wild is very yeah. remote, very expensive, uh, and they need lots of funds to keep yeah. it going. And uh, the second thing, which is really easy, especially for kids to do, um, is to like their Facebook page and share everything that they're sharing. So you're getting the word out. Yep. All of your friends will know all about what's happening with the Bilby out in the wild too. Well, thank you for talking to me today. You're welcome. <laughs> One great initiative that the sanctuary is doing is the kids on conservation trails. So next time you bring your kids in, 
why not let them have a go? It's great that the Centre is doing this to help get kids engaged and interested in conservation as they are the future. Throughout the wildlife century, there are many different kids on conservation stamping stations where you can learn about the animal's plight and what's happening to help save them. So next time you're in at Crumbin Wildlife Centre with your kids, don't forget to grab a Kids on Conservation passport.